Hey, it's Jason here with Incredibly Useful Exercises, Volume 13, Hybrid Workout, number one. So I'm assuming the rest of these will be also hybrid workouts. And it's just kind of what it sounds like. It's like a cross-training cross, cross -training sort of routine. Wow, that's a bad angle. Let's, uh, that's why I try to check <laughs> and uh, get a good angle here. Okay, we're good. We'll get the uh, screen grab going on the... Ooh, we have a different interface. It just updated to the new OS. Hopefully this will work. Uh, probably it'll work. Okay. Um, so what's going on? Uh, I can't believe I've, this is week 13 of these. That is, that is, uh, quite a thing. I'm, I'm reaching the end of incredibly useful exercises, at least the form I've been doing them going once a week and take my practice mute off. Oh, by the way, Joe Conyers of the Philadelphia Orchestra and many other things uses a practice mute also in his videos. I will try to remember to link up to his channel up in the card. Uh, I may forget, but just look him up. And if you're not following Joe, and you like this, uh, Joe, it, well, Joe is just incredible in, in all ways. I'm a huge fan. I've known him for 20 years, I think. We played on a stand together back at the Spoleto Festival. So, okay, all of these devices are I updated over the weekend. Um, and I, I was going to practice <laughs> Saturday and Sunday. And instead, I just hung out with the wife and the, the dog. So... And it's the high, my watch says the high is going to be 102 and unhealthy, which is a scary uh, weather forecast. So I have a fan out, uh, but I turned it off for this video. It's only 1030 or so in the morning. So it's, it's like 80 right now. So I'll film this and be on my merry way. Oop. And I'm very nervous about using my my rosin, even though it's this great leatherwood bespoke rosin from Australia, um, just because you can always put rosin on. It's a lot harder <laughs> to take it off. Woo, okay. Uh, someone was asking me on a YouTube comment on an extension video I did a while back, which I'll also try to remember to link up to somewhere um, about whether I tune with the closer closed or not. And that's actually a really good question. Um, the answer is I do what you're seeing here, which is I open it all up and I adjust it and then I tune the E string. And I know that's just for practical purposes from orchestral playing. I could also absolutely tune my low, it's a B string on this bass, which is crazy. Um, but uh, I don't, I generally open these up just because I have this feeling that they're gonna be holding the string down. In, in reality, you, I'm sure you could tune it just fine, but uh, someone more knowledgeable than me can answer that. And we will start with our usual strange, 30 seconds of silence. I'm already sweating, <laughs> even just breathing. So I'm probably gonna be taking more breaks than usual today, but that's okay. Um, I'd recommend anybody else doing what I'm doing in the, in the 80 degrees Fahrenheit to do similar. So I'm thinking of my feet, thinking of my knees. I've done many, many of these centering exercises. So if you go through any of these videos, hear me explain in more detail what I'm doing, thinking of my lower back, shoulder blades, I'm taking all the breaths I need. Ooh, we went on a run about an hour ago, breathing, and I thought I was relaxed, but every time I do this centering, I realize the tension I'm holding. Face. Take a breath, right shoulder, right elbow, right wrist, right fingers, breathe, and left shoulder, kind of 
connect everything back down to my my lower body parts. Try to feel myself rooted to the floor, left elbow, left wrist. I wiggle the fingers whenever I get to this open D. Ooh. Uh-oh. Hope that's not a sign of things to come. <laughs> Intonation. Body. Ooh. Give it a little wiggle. Check it with my arms. breathe and you see I'm gonna I'm gonna take probably multiple water breaks here so usually I try to indicate that in the timestamps but I'll probably just there are probably too many so you're gonna see a lot of my kitchen uh, do I want coffee no just water uh, I'm gonna stretch out a little bit um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do I like doing weekly content such as this I really only have time in my life for one such thing. So I don't know, I, I'm looking forward to experimenting with more traditional camera angles. And I actually just ordered a new lens for my, my main camera, which is a entry level Canon mirrorless. Uh, I got a 22 millimeter prime lens. So you're probably gonna see more uh, uh, edited looking videos, but it has been fun. Well, I, I edit so much of my life that goes out in public that it has been fun to do something where I'm just telling myself to just put out something raw and rough and let things rip. And so I well, we'll see. Anyway, got to focus tonalization. So we start activate the string with pizzicato, which in my words, and probably similar to what Dennis describes is very pure activation. And now can I do something similar? And the answer is yes, <laughs> with the bow. So I activate it with pizzicato, set, and activate. And last week I was talking about deadening the string and all this sort of stuff. I quit doing that immediately after filming the video. <laughs> so I changed my mind on everything all the time. Welcome to my life. Uh, then we're gonna, I'll go right on. We'll just do arco. So we're here, arco. I often rest my left hand here, sometimes here, generally here when I'm doing these. Just to do something that is. You know, just to, just to not have to think about any sort of balance issues and just focus on getting the string going. Now we just continue the process, get some half notes going. I'll start on the A string, using approximately half the bow. Activate and just ride that vibrating string. In my mind, I'm feeling the string vibrate like this. In reality, I am pretty sure that's not what's happening. There's this really cool thing called the Helmholtz principle that uh, work, the slip stick principle with a vibrating string. Remember, uh, formerly of Diderio Orchestral, uh, Lyris Hung had, uh, had shared a video with me on how the string actually, actually vibrates. If I remember, if I have time, I will link up. I will link up to that, or maybe even put that in here since I'm talking about it. But, but it's a really cool and kind of eye-opening thing to see how a string works, and um, uh, it makes you realize like the actually what's happening under the bow. Okay, I think, and I think the video that I saw was a violin string, but the same principle certainly applies for bass strings. Obviously, definitely applies for bass strings. But you know, activating the string, and that's why I think Dennis starts with this, just activating the dang string is just more work on the bass than any of the other string instruments. I know I've talked about that in other videos, but uh, j that's why I think that something like this, whether it's this specific exercise or something related, I think is really good to start your practice with. And you know, I'm just kind of closing this out here with pizzicato. Uh, I have for years started with what I call simple motions. And uh, for these past few months going through these, I've been going through specifically what Dennis lays out, but these are all what I would think of what's happened so far. Um, the silence uh, and then certainly the centering and this tonalization, just simple motions on the bass and doing them as effectively as possible. Okay. Time is up. How'd that go? That was fine. Tapers. I'm not. Get, I'm just gonna play. I realize I need to fix the timers because uh, I won't get through this with the time I gave. Since I was that C was giving me trouble, I'm just making sure I got a good C. I'm going to start with A, which is just forte to piano. Taper using most of the bow on the forte note. 
So you see how little bow I'm devoting to this second eighth note, right? It's mostly quarter, and then it's just like a little tail. Well, it's a taper, I guess. That's what we call them tapers. Such a common motion in music. And then Dennis has this cool thing where he goes up to the, the ninth. And then back down. You could vibrate, and I think that would be a good idea. But also good to just think about the bow itself and, and the bow divisions. And just because we're about to run out of time, I'll do C, which is the same thing as A, just starting up bow, which is more challenging for most people, including me. <laughs> And you hear there's a little burble in my sound, I'll call it. You see how my, if you look closely, my, uh, my bow is sort of jumping off the string, which is not what I want. So um, that's uh, a part of it, I think, is because, oh, I solved it by talking with this GoPro on my head. Uh, what was happening, and this is why it's good to do these simple motions, at least for me at the beginning of a practice session, I was letting my bow hair angle change uh, on the down bow, just kind of arbitrarily. Sometimes that could be okay, but I, that was why I was getting not getting that uh, connection. But what I focused on right before I ran out of time, <laughs> is trying to keep the angle, and here's where a different camera angle would help, trying to keep the angle the same instead of letting it jump. So those are the little things that I'm always looking out for as I begin my day with these, uh, what I call simple motions. Okay, big wiggle, this is a cool one. Um, I've done this a bunch and I never get through it, so I think I'm going to jump down to variation E. So the idea with this is, uh, so it's for the awareness, exercise, and mastery of accurate bow divisions and for bow control in different regions of the bow. So we're going to explore the bow in this, and I would not optimally probably play the way I'm about to play in most musical situations, but I'm just, I'm using this as uh, an exercise for just, for awareness. Well, just what Dennis said. So I'm looking at bar 24 right here, variation E, and I'm going to use a lot of bow for the, the forte. So big wiggle, big. So you'll see I'm, I'm, Trying to see how much bow can I use while still getting a quality sound. And now, Dennis has a metronome marquee on here. Obviously, I was not using one, but let's just, out of curiosity, let's hear 60. And Modacity, my practice app of choice, by the way, has uh, subdivisions built in, so I can boom, 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 boom. So significantly faster than I was going, but hey, practice in whatever tempo floats your boat. But let's try it a little faster. So, uh, now, you, you may have noticed, I certainly noticed that I wasn't grabbing the fundamental on those first notes, um, and then it was better. And part of that is because, and I might be getting the physics wrong on this, <laughs> that would not be surprising, but uh, these, I, I use a slower bow. I think I do. Um, I might have to think about this more clearly, but I use a slower bow the thicker the string gets. Yeah, sure, right? Yeah, that's how it works. Um, so, so that's why our bass bows are shorter than violin bows, which seems counterintuitive until you think about that. So um, I was not getting the fundamental. I was getting a woof. There's the fundamental. Now I have a, ooh. That glowing tone was beautiful. Now, I have a couple ways that I could uh, solve that problem. One would be to put on rosin, which I am scared to do on a, not, now, oh, now it says 91 for the high and sunny, not unhealthy. So that makes me slightly happier, though 91 is still temperature where I'm worried about rosin. The other thing I could do is use just less bow for the forte. And then when I get to the higher strings, then use more bow. And that's what I would do for this. Um, the other thing I, uh, that might be out of whack is the amount of tension on the hair. So I might play around with that. Um, 
Again, in, in weather like this, uh, I try to be easy on myself and my gear and not try not try to put too much rosin on. Anyway, this is a very cool exercise. And then he moves the forte around on you, which is surprisingly challenging and then gives you dot rhythm. Very cool stuff, but I'm gonna try to keep on schedule. Got a lot, got a lot on the plate today. So uh, big wiggle, that was hey, four stars. I'll give myself four stars. Okay, power 16s, I've done a ton. I'm not gonna play him for the full 30 seconds, but generally what, what Dennis says, and I do think this is, uh, great. I have been doing this. I'm just for the sake of time. 130 for 30 seconds, 140, 150, 160, back to 130. Um, I try to get as much sound as I can while still getting the fundamental. He does B down here. That's a cool note to do. I can already tell my bow hair is going to be uh, need to be a little tighter. And I also can tell I'm probably not going to be happy with the amount of ra I probably wish I had more rosin on here. We'll try it. Two, uh, uh. And what I'm trying to think about doing, I'll just put the bass down so, so I can demonstrate more clearly. I'm trying to think about the energy. I'm trying to use my whole body to play that bow stroke, which I don't think I'm exactly doing, but if I think about that, and I think about getting my shoulder and my back and just my energy into the string and loading the string with just the, the weight that I have available to me and not just thinking about my arm. And additionally, thinking about how relaxed I can be while I do that, then I, I feel like I'm practicing this exercise the right way in a way that's healthy or, or is helping me to improve. And I do think these exercises are helping me to improve. I'm a fan. Thank you, Dennis, for making these. So here's 140 for a little bit. Uh, uh, uh. Ooh, that feels good. You know, the more I practice this, the more in shape I feel doing it. So, which is the point. <laughs> so, all right, I'll just give you... 10, 10 seconds or so of 160. Everything's the same, I'm just reducing the, the, well, I'm just increasing the speed, reducing the amount of bow slightly. Yeah. Two, uh, uh. Okay, and I, uh, I am giving you the abbreviated version here today, and you've seen that a lot if you've watched these videos, and thank you if you have watched these videos. They've been fun to do. Um, tetrachord warm-ups are very cool. I've been, I never did this exercise before discovering it in Dennis's series, although I've done exercises like this, and I've become a big fan of this one, actually. I really, and I think I'm getting better at it. <laughs> so we'll see. I'll probably check in for pitch a little bit here or there, but we start on E flat, and well, I'll just talk through a little bit. So we start major tetrachord. Minor tetrachord. Flat two tetrachord. That big interval in the middle. Whole tone. Now E major. E minor, I'm gonna speed it up a little. Flat two. Big interval. Whole tone. F major, F minor, flat two, big interval, whole tone. Okay, and I'm gonna take a break because I am feeling a little bit tired, a little bit sticky because of this weather, and I'm sweating buckets, so. Oh. I'm a big fan of lots of little breaks. Lots of little breaks. I generally don't stay on the instrument for more than an hour. And a lot of these videos have been an hour, so that's generally the max I do in a session. Um, and then I try to do as many sessions as I need. Okay, so, oh. Uh, oops, I should have should have done a... I forgot to put, uh, I'll have to put an edit in there. Okay. Uh, screen recording stopped on here, but I will start it up again. Uh, how do I do that? Wow. Okay. We're back. Uh, we'll see how I edit that together. Oh, dang. Was that my first edit? 
or maybe I'll blur it out or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Um, remember to put your devices in <laughs> silent mode, Jason. Do not disturb. Okay. Tetrachord. Uh, that's the idea. It goes up to A whole tone. Uh, and it ends on B flat. I think I'm going to move on from there. I got distracted by not having my device on do not disturb. That's okay, though. Okay, Clark Thumb Drills. We are definitely doing a drone on this. The one that I struggle with the most intonationally is C. So I just have to look out for that one. So here we go. Whoop. The last time I did these was Friday, but I'm already feeling uh, that I'm a little bit out of shape on these, which it's fascinating how quickly that how quickly that happens. Um, uh, you'll you will also see that I'm varying the speed because I kind of know myself and where I'm likely to be out of tune or more out of tune. So I'm just kind of checking with those. are somewhat problematic for me but um the just the shape of the hand right there that is just a little bit of a, a position that i don't um there's nothing else i do in life that is in that hand shape so it's a little bit of a thing to get used to but it's quite a useful i'm referring to c it's quite a useful hand shape to have in your hand shape or hand frame uh repertoire that sounds pretentious but that's probably a good way to describe it okay thumb position hand shapers i find these oddly challenging um and dennis has i believe for this one he has two he has he splits them up so he has this one uh, first, and then he has the uh, other one uh, later, which is a, actually a cool way to do it. I, I dig it. Um, okay, so we start off with the with a half step between thumb and one, and then whole step between thumb and one, and then we just scooch the thumb up and rinse and repeat from this G. And the last position is this D right here. And I t once I hit the D harmonic. I switch from three to two, and I do everything one, two, three. So down here, thumb, uh, did I say that wrong? I said that wrong. A thumb, one, two. Down here, thumb, one, three. Up here, thumb, one, two. Here we go. Now, I'll maybe give you a zoom so you can have something to look at for this. So start with chromatic, then semi-chromatic. And even though you're hearing, sorry, then I'll shut up and actually play. Uh, even though you're, you're hearing only three notes, so it's really... Um, kind of semi-chromatic, what you're hearing, I guess. My fingers are fully chromatic. They're each on a half step. And then, because I open up one, that's what we call semi-chromatic. That comes from the Franco Petrocchi Simplified Higher Technique. Wonderful book. Okay, I'll just play a little bit of this because I'm running out of time. <laughs> CD, B, C, D, B, C sharp, D sharp, C, C sharp, D sharp, D, E natural, C, D, E natural, C sharp, I can check it, this one's going to be a little flat, but probably more in tune than I am. Then D, E flat, F, D, E, F sharp. And then you just go back down. Cool exercise. I like it. Um, I can get through it with that amount of time. Whoops, bumped the mic. Sorry about that. Uh, it's going better than it was, so I'll give it three stars. Um, Professor Paul's double stop exercise. This is a cool one. Dennis recommends practicing a pizzicato, then doing an arco. I'm just going to play it. Arco. Um, this is like a laundry list of things I don't do well. 
to get this perfect fourth bar right here uh, with the fourth finger, I really have to feel three and four working as a unit. So again, that's four, 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 two. The lower note is listed first in the fingering, then four, one, then tritone, then fifth, fourth, fourth. And then you just go down the bass like that. So now we're on C sharp, second line right here, C sharp and G sharp, or G sharp and C sharp going for the lower note. And we just do the same pattern. And he's written whole notes, so that would be probably not that fast. Has, yeah, the last one he has with an open string, which is cool. There it is. Woo, it's good. Um, you could do those on, on the other strings, uh, the middle two and the lower two, for sure. That's a good exercise. Uh, I like it. Okay. Good. Sorry, I'm gonna take another break for water. I guess I could just carry the water glass over there, couldn't I? But I kind of like getting away from the base and moving around a little bit. <sighs> Boy, 10 degrees Fahrenheit of temperature makes a huge difference. It's in, in this goofy town I live in where no one has air conditioning, it's not, not awesome uh, this time of year. But we will we will be fine uh just drink a lot of water and stay out of the sun during the middle of the day okay hand shapers number two i feel like i've barely gotten through this one um and i've been focusing on a little bit more same idea starting this time on the d so low thumb position right here's th here's what you would typically call thumb position and then this would typically or frequently be called low thumb position. And this D is sort of the agreed low point that most people think is totally cool. Although I've actually, my bass teacher in college and many, many people actually will use the thumb all the way down and cellists will too. So it's all fair game, but this is a good spot to start. I'm gonna do separate bows. Check in when necessary. Trust but verify. Ooh, that works. I can start to add some slurs. So we got a D minor chord under the fingers there. If we throw in that note, maybe slur four. Ooh, my thumb, I have a little lower pitch accuracy on the thumb typically than the other fingers. strings a couple weeks ago. I don't know if you ever noticed there was a red dot on my bridge, which is still there. It's just on this side. Now I got a white dot on this side. Good idea. These dots were put on by, by a great luthier uh, who lived here in the Bay Area now is in France. Uh, um, uh, and then we have uh, the the red dots were put on by uh, uh, luthier currently still here in the Bay Area. So um, yeah, anyway. Uh, I don't know why I'm telling you that. <laughs> Except I lowered them and these exercises have been easier since I've been doing that. Okay, coordination, this Paul Ellison exercise, which is a, a nasty one. Um, I'm going to just, even though the, the clock's ticking, I'm just gonna, after that hand shaper, just make sure that my muscles are relaxing. Uh, oh, I took a nice breath. Okay, coordination, here we go. Um, I think I'm going to, yeah, I think I'll probably go all the way up. Oops, I'm losing the 
Newport Nation, so I'll slow it down. Check my pitch. It's okay. Ooh, pitch. I can check it down here. There we are. If he holds or he just flips you around. So then you flip it around, so we're on that high A. There we are. So now I'm going down. I'm gonna go, go a little slower because I'm feeling some fatigue. Yeah, I'm doing okay with pitch. And I'm feeling as I do these, a little bit of tension in my trapezius, which I realize you can't see on the GoPro, but um, so I'm just uh, thinking about lengthening. Sometimes just thinking about keeping my head upright a little bit more helps. Keep going. Uh, let's finish it. And that one, it's like a, it's like riding a bicycle. If I get, if I get it, I got it. Or it's like learning how to ride a bike, and not being very good at it. Um, if I lose it, it's gone. But I, be, I lost it a little bit going up. Then it came back. Okay, oompa. I'm going to probably just uh, do this first page and not do the proper exercise because, um, yeah, I moved, I moved a lot of. Moved a lot of fingers <laughs> so far. But I just wanna wanna be kind to my body. And I'm just kinda uh, checking with my neck, making sure I'm breathing, not, not tightening up from any of those exercises. Okay, Oompa Primer. I'm uh, intentionally approaching the base with a little bit of an angled hand position as opposed to a square hand position for these. Just gotta try that again. Oh. There we are, pitch. go. Now we're going to try these So with B1. Do these forking motions. This is uh, derived from a famous Samandal etude. Then we go on B1. B2. Oh, there are two B1s. <laughs> B1 number two. Okay, so here's B2. Wait, I think I dorked that one up. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's right. And then the last one uh, throws in a D natural going down. These are all what I think of as uh, kind of special moves that you do need in bass playing, particularly orchestral bass playing, where we're. Um, uh, in this region of the bass, we would do a similar. We would do patterns differently in thumb position. Uh, most people would anyway. I would likely. So this is a cool exercise. I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna burn myself out on it today. Uh, one finger vibrato scale. I love this one. This is a really cool exercise, uh, and I've practiced variants like this over the years. But um, so you're gonna do the first section twice. You're gonna do it with the first finger and then the second finger. Then you go on to B and then you do it with the third and fourth finger. What I do with B is I start on the fourth finger and then I just switch to the third finger around the F sharp and then go back down. So I just do that one once. C is uh, makes you feel like you're being punished for something, but it's very good for you. That's with the thumb. That's when I realized how bad my thumb vibrato is. But maybe it, uh, I was practicing this I think every day last week until the weekend. So I'm noticing some improvements. So we'll see uh, how taking a couple days off uh, kept this under the fingers. I'm also going to put a, a 
drone on the fifth. So here we go, A. Just thinking about an easy vibrato. centering and I'm just also thinking about lengthening feeling like there's a string attached to the top of my head and I'm going to do the same exact thing with second finger generally my most comfortable vibrato finger is second finger reason. I'm going to shoot a video about shifting for a, a festival coming up. I'm going to shoot that today or tomorrow. So I've been thinking about shifting a little bit, uh, but uh, now I'm going to do fourth finger. And by the way, when I vibrate on fourth finger, I think of three and four as a unit. And then when I switch to third finger, I think of two and three as a unit. So generally, um, the, these, this finger I think of it independently as a vibrato finger, this one independently, and then I think of three, I think of two and three, four, I think of three and four. Uh, and you'll see a lot of string players kind of sort of do that. We could talk a lot about that, but maybe in another video. Um, uh, string crossing curves. I, this one is cool. I, I've got this one's really grown on me as I've done it. So small curves, you're just gonna see. For me, you're just gonna see motion in the fingers. Uh, did I screw that up? Uh, and the arm's going to look like it's on the same plane. At least that's from my perception. That's what's going on. Now in the big curves, you're going to see my arm actually move. It's going to shift planes a little bit. And that's for reasons that Dennis has talked about on his excellent YouTube channel. And uh, I've talked about in huh, more ad hoc ways through, throughout this series. Okay, so here's small curves, throwing in major sixths thirds, depending on where we're coming from. Big curves. Same thing up high, so now we're in fourth position or Raboth uh, fourth position, and people call this many things, including just thumb position. Again, small curves. My arm stays relatively on the same plane. In big curves, you see a little more motion from the arm. I actually feel like everything moves to a new plane. Now the same thing, throwing in some intervals. We're in measure 37. If you're following along in the book or trying to see it on the video. I'm not loving some of these thirds and sixths, but tomorrow's a new day. Curves. I love practicing these simple intervals like this. 
and just really focusing on getting a beautiful sound no matter what I'm doing. If I only had five, 10 minutes in a day, I, 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 doing just this page would be time well spent. And just thinking about big intervals, you hear me or would hear me if you were watching me in a not so talky, normal Jason practice session, um, you, would, you would see, um, yeah, you, you would hear a lot of fifths, a lot of open intervals like that. Okay, glowing tones is next. Uh, one of my, another, I, I keep saying they're all my favorite, but this is another favorite. And it really is, I think I got one. Didn't I get one? Going earlier in this session, I did. So now let's see if I can replicate my past success. Yeah, I didn't really get the fundamental, but I got my bass ringing. There you are. We'll find this A. Good. I'll zoom in so you can see. So that was the first one. Second one. Third one is just the open A string. I don't know what the heck that was. It's just my... Oh, there's the, there's the tone. My uh, fear of putting rosin on is making... I'll, I'll blame it on that. Ooh, I can start, hopefully the, the microphone's picking that up down there. Um, I can hear that. Ooh. Nice. It's just good awareness exercise. It's pretty cool. And I think I've mentioned this before, but this is like something that young bass teachers do with their, with their your young students to hear the, the bass as a wooden bell as, Ooh, that one is tough for me to get. And I run the risk of muting it because it's ringing the G string. E, whoa, well, it's, if it's flat like that, it's not gonna ring. There we go. I'm getting like a really, what? I'm not gonna try to sing it because that would be a disaster, but I'm getting a really high harmonic on that one. Oh, what did I do? Sorry, <laughs> oh, I might have sharp. Uh, and then, Let's finish this off real quick here. That uh, that's what happens when I lower my strings. <laughs> it means I need to take it in at some point to uh, one of my luthiers. Ooh, that's good. Ooh, that one really sings. Good. Just a couple more. Do the one on E and A. Oh, ah, I love having my bass ring like that. It's so cool, and I love this exercise too. I know I sound like a broken record, but. It's another one of these, it's just awareness exercise. So, you know, he gets you aware, dentist with, with this hybrid, gives you a little workout, it's like you're at the gym doing some cross training, and then you just go back to a little bit more awareness at the end, very, very thoughtfully arrange. So much more intentional than my practice sessions. I just kind of arbitrarily play whatever tempo for A. That's just sort of like my warm-up line. Now, these are the more what I think of as the exercises. Move the bow closer to the bridge. Back down. All the way up high. Ooh, intonation, but. moving a two I'm doing a pivot for this but you could absolutely shift to whatever floats your boat oh wow maybe I'll do that a little more in tune how about that maybe not <laughs> um, again not an excuse I could make that I'm kind of making is sticky 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 okay we go. Maybe I'll practice that a few times since I missed it. was fairly disastrous. And again, something that GoPro uh, makes hard to see um, that a more, I call it proper, although this is fine too, uh, angle would reveal is how I actually shift my entire body. Part of the, the, the power of this exercise is really, th for me, 
Ooh. is realizing how my entire stance and my, and the weight, uh, how I'm distributing the weight changes between this low, medium, high position. Very, again, very clever. Did he? Oh, yeah. He. Th this is derived mo mostly from Raboth, I believe, or maybe Dennis's own invention. It's cool. And then you can absolutely do it on the G-string, but I am going to close out this steamy practice session with some silence. Okay, that is gonna do it for another week of incredibly useful exercises. Thank you for following along with these. 13 weeks and you'd think I'd learn to put my stupid uh, do not disturb mode on, which I love that Dennis even mentions in the book, put your devices in do not disturb mode. Uh, I'm as guilty as everybody, but hopefully these have been helpful and I've gone through all previous volumes and they're in a playlist here, which I will have linked up to somewhere. Thank you so much for watching. If you're, this is not an ad for my double bass course <laughs> uh, the, uh, for sure. Um, but if you want to follow along in a more formal way with me and what I think about, I have a course out on Discover Double Bass Beginners Classical Bass, but really not just classical, it's for, it's for anybody. Uh, feel free to check it out. There are a lot of free lessons out there, and if you want to support uh, the channel and the podcast and everything I do, uh, purchasing that would be, would be great, but I just appreciate you being here, and if you found value in this video, liking and subscribing and smashing that like button like we're supposed to say uh, would be appreciated. All right, I'm going to go uh, turn on the fan and try to de-humidify de this place. <laughs>